Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. In this build video, we're gonna be showing you how to build the main primary trainer wing for our FT Tenant STEM project. Now this wing is specifically designed to be a three channel wing, which means it does not have ailerons on it, but it does have polyhedral. The polyhedral on this wing is gonna give you great self riding tendencies, and it's also gonna allow the rudder to turn the airplane in a nice coordinated fashion. This is the wing I definitely recommend that you build first because it's incredibly easy to build, it's durable, and it's very stable. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So for building our primary trainer wing, we're gonna need these five components. We're gonna have our two main spars. We're gonna have our primary wing panels. We're also gonna have this dihedral gauge and you're gonna notice it has T for trainer. Make sure you have this one, not the one that's labeled S. Now before we get started, let's go ahead and start with our bevel cuts here on our primary wing panel. So we'll go ahead and move the spars forward here. And the area that we're gonna cut is gonna be the leading edge that you see right here. So from right where the leading edge of the wing goes over, the score line, we're gonna bend this 180 degrees. And then we're gonna take our utility knife here that's included in our FT Crafty kit. We're gonna open it up to the first detent right here. Now, if you've never done bevel cuts before, you can always practice on a scrap piece of foam. We're gonna talk you through it, but also in the video link down below, we're gonna show you alternative methods, some not even using a razor blade, that you can get a really nice bevel cut every time. So our first cut here, you're gonna notice that we're not gonna hold our razor blade 90 degrees. We're gonna hold it at an angle, and I just need to start it right at the point where this foam meets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down and keep my razor blade just above the paper as I pull towards me. There we go. Now, if your razor blade ever gets dull and it starts tearing the paper, make sure you replace that. An alternative method than just holding it is you can place your wing panel down against the table, leaving the area where you're gonna bevel cut, and then you can ride your hand and the razor blade up against the table as you pull. Here we go. You're gonna notice that my Razor blades get a little dull. I'm just gonna swap that out real quick. It's a good way to make sure that the bevel cut is sharp enough for this model is to make sure that we can easily bend this almost to a 45 degree angle as it points towards the wing. If you can't easily fold this over to 45 degrees, continue removing the material out. Or another option is you could take something like a mar magic marker and then you can crush this down just like you see here. Let's do the same process now on the other side. Fold over 180 degrees. I'll take this down to the table, keeping my blade just above the paper. Always making sure that I'm looking ahead of the blade. There's one side. And there's the other. Bends pretty good. I'm just going to go over with my marker here to help make a little bit more. Now that we have our bevel cut, our next step is to install our main spars. Now our main spars, because of the kit, is going to have a seam here, but the seam that I really want you to take notice of is going to be the one on the outer side. When we glue these down, we're going to make sure that the score cut is facing up and it's also lining up where the ends are on here. We don't want to see this. Go ahead and turn this around. Don't need to worry about gluing that together or anything. It's gonna be just fine inside the wing. Perfect. Once we're happy with the way it looks, a little bit of glue all the way down. Don't have to put too much. We'll flip it over. Again, we're gonna line it against the back trailing edge of the lower surface of the wing. Making sure that the score cut and the score cut on the bottom surface of the wing line up. Let's do that on the other side now. Always making sure we test fit. Everything looks good, score cuts up. Smooth on the back trailing edge and on the sides. Flip it over 180 degrees. We do it all the way down. And there we go. Using the tip of a ballpoint pen or a screwdriver, we're just barely going to break the tension of the top piece of paper along the two score cuts. This is going to help the wing fold over naturally and easily. 
Now that we've broken that tension on the top surface of the wing, we can kind of use our fingers and kind of bend the wing up into its shape. And as we fold this over, you're gonna notice that the wing now takes on an airfoil shape because of that spar placement. After we practice this a couple times, we're gonna place a very thin bead of glue right in the score cut, making sure we don't put too much on there. And then we're gonna go back over again against the table. We're gonna kind of pat it against the table, making sure the trailing edge goes down, and then we're gonna open it up. And then right back down against the table again, one, two, three, four, five, open it up. What we're doing is we're allowing the wing to take its shape, but we're not gluing it down to the spar just yet. A good way to know that you have the proper shape is that when you hold this down flat against the table, the trailing edge is firmly against the table, and also the top surface and the bottom surface of the wing where they connect with the spar are parallel to each other. Now you can see our wing has a nice strong shape and the airfoil is locked in. Our last step is to place a bead of glue on the leading edge and the top of the spar. Now it's incredibly important to make sure you have plenty of hot glue in your hot glue gun. If you need to, make sure you have a stick ready to place inside so you don't run out of hot glue in this process. We're first going to start right over top of the spar. I'm going to skip over that score line. And then we're going to go right down where the paper and the foam meet on the leading edge. Now we can fold this back over on the table. And we're gonna hold this for a good minute here to make sure everything fully dries and as strong as possible before moving it. Whenever we're holding the wings down, I always use the flats of my hands and not my fingertips. I don't push with my shoulders. I just rest my hands on here and let the flats of my hands spread as wide as possible do the work. Notice the tips of my fingers are pushed on the trailing edge while the flats of my hands are pushing right over top of the spars. After 30 seconds to a minute, you'll notice that if you lift up your hands, nothing changes with the shape of the wing. Let's go and do the exact same process now on the other side. Just like before, we're gonna take the tip of a pen or a screwdriver, and we're just gonna break through just the very top surface of that paper. Once we've done that, we can take the tips of our finger and our hands, and we can kind of start curling up the wing into its main shape. Now we can fold that over nice and gently, making sure that the trailing edge meets firmly against the table, and that the top surface of the wing, especially over the spars, is parallel with the bottom of the wing. Once we're happy with that, a thin ribbon of glue right down in that seam that we pushed in on both sides. And then back down against the table, kind of pat it down for five seconds, lift it up, pat it down for five seconds, lift it up. One, two, three, four, five, lift up. We're making sure that the wing has its shape, but at the same time, it's not glued together just yet. Now that the wing has its shape, you can make sure we have plenty of glue in our hot glue gun. We're going to place a bead of glue right over top of the spar, hop over the score line, and right down the center of the leading edge. Back down to the table again. This time we're going to hold it firmly for a good 30 seconds to a minute, making sure the glue fully dries before letting up. After about a minute, you'll notice as we lift our hands, everything looks great. Now, before we join the two wing halves, we're gonna establish what we call dihedral, or in this case, because there's multiple points where the wing's shaped up, polyhedral. Polyhedral gives the airplane the ability to self-level as it's flying through the air. Anytime that you have the wings where they're facing up and the wing banks, this wing here on the bottom that's gonna be flat to the horizon is gonna generate more lift. That's naturally gonna roll the plane back to a state of equilibrium. The more dihedral or less dihedral you put in, it's gonna affect the flight characteristics. Too much dihedral is gonna cause the plane to wobble. Too little dihedral is gonna let the plane drift. We're given just enough dihedral to make the plane very gentle, but at the same time, keep its turns nice and coordinated and very smooth. Now, whenever you're selected your gauges, make sure that you have the one that says T. T is gonna be for trainer. Before we put our gauge on, I'm gonna take my razor blade. And I'm just gonna make sure that I've cut down through any kind of glue on this portion right here. It's also easy if you have a steel ruler, you can kind of go down in there and just crush out that open area right to the bottom. I'm also gonna take my thumbnail and I'm just gonna put a very gentle crease going to the back trailing edge. When you do this, it's gonna give the ability for the wing to naturally lift up very easily without too much work. Now that we can do that, we're gonna fasten our little dihedral gauge right on the wing tip. And as we press this down, you're gonna see that gives us the exact amount of dihedral that we want. 
Easiest thing to do now is to kind of open this up. Notice I kind of crack this down, which is fine. I'm gonna press a bead of glue right in the foam. This is a good time to also have some scrap foam handy. And as I press this down in, we're gonna give this a good minute to fully dry. It's always nice to keep a little scrap piece of foam to wipe off any extra glue that squeezes out. Now, just like the wings, it's incredibly important that we give this plenty of time to fully dry, usually at least a minute before we move this. Anytime we move this and the dihedral changes, it can make the plane fly one way or the other. You notice after a minute when I lift my hands, nothing changes. We can do the same process now on the other side. All right, same process now on the other side. I'm just gonna take my razor blade, cut through any potential little glue globs. And I always like to kind of take my ruler, press it down in here, and open up that channel. You can also take my fingernail and just give a very delicate crease, telling the foam where we want it to bend on the very back. Quick test fit, making sure there's not too much resistance here. Then I'm just gonna kind of gently crack this open, just very little. Open up that cavity and press a nice healthy bead of glue right inside. There we go. Got a dihedral gauge on the end. And we're gonna hold that flat against the table and take a scrap piece of foam and scrape off any excess. Again, we're gonna give this a good minute plus to dry until everything's fully cured. Ready for our next step, and that's gonna be gluing the two wing halves together. It's really important whenever we glue the two wing halves together, make sure you don't have any kind of glue globs that are sticking out, or that can cause the wing to not come together easily. Oftentimes it's right around the leading edge here. There we go. We're just gonna do a quick test fit here. Make sure it's nice and tight. You're gonna notice this cutout right here. Now this cutout is basically needed if you're doing the pusher configuration or the primary trainer. If you're flying this as a three channel tractor where the motor's up in the front, that's not gonna be needed to be cut out this time. Now don't worry if you go from a pusher configuration to a tractor configuration, the notch is out. You can still fasten your wing down, no problem at all. All right, we got our test fit here. Everything looks really good. All right, to join our wings, the first thing we're gonna do, is take a little piece of tape on the bottom here. I like to use two inch cheap thin packing tape. We're gonna press this right on the bottom. And lifting up, I'm gonna line up the bottom surfaces of the wing. Not worried about the top, just let the line the bottom just perfect like that. Now we can open this up. We're gonna apply a nice healthy bead of glue all the way down on that one side, right on the bottom, and also right on the spars. Now we can carefully unfold this, take it flat down to our table. That's incredibly important that we keep this nice and flat against the table, just like you see here. While we're holding this down, we can take a scrap piece of foam, wipe off any extra. If you have any extra tape, we can just pull that down there. All right, everything is dried. Our wing is nice and strong. We're gonna go ahead and reinforce this with two inch tape, but before we do, we're gonna take one of our pieces of barbecue screw that are included in our kit. And we're gonna go about an inch outside of both of these little edge marks here. Easy way to be able to break this. It's just simply rock it back and forth in all directions, breaking those strands. We can now center this up right over top here, just like you see here. If you're gonna be doing the conventional trainer pusher configuration, you can always cut this out. This is nothing more than reinforcement for your rubber bands, so the rubber bands don't cut into your foam board. And it's very easy, if you wanna cut this out later, to go back in with a pair of scissors or side cuts, or even a razor blade, and cut that out. Now that our reinforcement plate's down, we're just gonna go over with a two inch piece of tape. And this is gonna add a tremendous amount of strength to the wing. At this point, the trainer wing for our FT-Tenant is now done. We're ready to move on to our next step of the build project for the FT-Tenant.